Hello, and welcome to the Beastly Artifact. I'm Justin, and this is my co-host. I'm Spooky Alex. We're two former creative writing majors searching for meaning in a sea of blood. Every other week, we'll select one piece of content each, a corpse, a bowl of maggots, severed rat's tails, that we found particularly interesting and discuss it. As always, our comments are our own and not associated with any institution. This show will absolutely contain explicit language and themes. See the show notes for specific content warnings. All right, Justin, what are you topping off this week with? <laughs> uh, so this week I am talking about the album Manable Lecter by Brother Lynch Hung. This is uh, Brother Lynch Hung's most recent album, um, he started in 1995 with his first album, Season of the Sickness, which also is a pretty Halloween-y album. It at least has a few Halloween songs on it, including the title track and one called Welcome to Your Own Death. Uh, but this album came out in 2013 and sort of continues his career of making very sort of bizarre, spooky, creepy music. Um, it would definitely be in the genre of what we call horror, horror core. His previous album, I can also recommend Coat Hanger Strangler. Also has some good Halloween songs on it. Um, so before I say what I'm going to say about this album, I'll, I guess I should just put it out there. This album is very not safe for work. Probably all of Brother Lin Chung's music is not safe for work. There's a lot of explicit language to the music, but also the themes are very explicit. Uh, lots of murder, which you might expect. I mean, it's Halloween, you know, like a lot of slasher type stuff. Uh, also a lot of violence against women, which might turn some people off. And also a lot of references to cannibalism uh, throughout his entire disc discography. Yeah, this dude loves eating people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if in this album he talks about eating babies at all, but that is also something that he has talked about in the past. Yeah, this might turn some people off, but this is right up our alley, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I will point out, uh, I, I listened to an interview with him once, and he, had, he said he has not ever actually eaten human meat, uh, but he did say that he, if he was offered some, he would. You've, you have been warned with that disclaimer. Anyways, but I chose this album over some of his other albums just because I feel like this has some of the best music overall in combination with having a good number of sort of Halloween-y type songs. I would say the best ones are there's one called MDK, one called Disappeared, another called Eating You, and finally Meat Cleaver. So what I will say, uh, there's more songs than that. Um, one thing I'll say about the albums, his entire discography really tends to be kind of uneven in that they're not everything is good, not everything is scary, <laughs> but the stuff that is good tends to be like really good in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But but even within individual songs, sometimes it can be sort of <laughs> strange. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to explain. I can't really. You just have to like listen to it to get like the full sense of it. But uh, one example I could sort of give is even in it's like I, I really enjoyed the song "Eating You," mm -hmm. but even that one's kind of strange. And I don't know if you had a chance to listen and sort of like think about it. But he kind of spoils the ending of the story right in the beginning, yeah. But then okay. sort of like continues on as if he hasn't spoiled the ending <laughs> of the story. And the way it's sort of set, there's like other people he's talking to, and he like spoils it to the people that he's talking to in the story. But then they're like still surprised by the end. It's it's very strange, but it sort of does. I will say, it kind of does add to the overall uneasiness of it by mm -hmm. being kind of like imperfect in some way. But yeah, just listening to like his whole discography, you'll kind of have this unbalanced sense because it's. Something is just a bit off about everything. <laughs> but I will say my the fa my favorite song on the album, though, is Meat Cleaver, uh, which also has a music video that goes along with it. Uh, and it's not like the scariest in visuals that you'll see in your life or anything like that, but as far as this sort of genre goes, it is a pretty well put together music video, very Halloween-y, graphic, gruesome. 
I wish the meat cleaver had a little bit more of a, a story to it, but it does sort of like paint this very unstable, cannibalistic murderer. And it's, yeah, it's a lot of good imagery to it. And it also is just a jam. You could just listen to it on repeat. It just, it goes hard. MDK and Disappeared, I haven't said as much about it. I said those were good too. Those just kind of, again, have that sort of like creepy imagery, like uh, interesting sort of like uh, instrumentals to them. Uh, I find that he sort of like all chase between like these kind of like creepy piano instrumentals and these sort of like intense drum sort of beats, I guess. Uh, again, sort of like hard to explain without just listening to it. But yeah, it's kind of like one of these, I don't know, I always like to listen to like Halloween music when it gets to October, and uh, for me at least, this is a, one of the better albums. Even the cover of the album is kind of cool looking. I don't really know what it's supposed to be. He's kind of like in this weird mask, uh, kind of like some leather face type mm. imagery or something. Uh, but yeah, the overall effect is just, is, you know, I'm not saying it's like, it's not necessarily going to give you nightmares or anything, but, you know, it is just kind of like a fun, creepy, gruesome type album. Yeah, I don't really have much more, not really much more to summarize. I don't want to, like, spoil the, the, the plot line to eating you. Uh, but, I don't know, was this your your first time listening to this music? Uh, what did you think of it this is my first uh time listening to brother lynch Hong. that i will say off the top that that uh the album cover is pretty unsettling i like that a lot that was a good sort of letting like, you know what you're getting into i i'm trying to think like other like sort of like horror what horror core horror rap like especially like horror rap i guess and i've listened to and i don't i like a little bit of a more technique especially you know like that infamous song that's name just escapes me right now a dance with the devil thank you um mm. But I watched the music video to Meat Cleaver first, and I was like, the like the warning that they gave at the beginning, I thought was a li- like not necessary. I mean, I get it, but like I don't know, like it wasn't that just like completely appalling. They're like, usually we, we don't want to censor our artists, so like here you go. Like, it was fine, <laughs> it was just like yeah. thematically, like I get why, but like what you actually saw was, I mean. A lot of the theater of the mind is always going to make that unsettling. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those things where, like, you add the warning to try and, like, make it scarier, almost. But, no, I liked it a lot. I think, I mean, because I'm not, we're not here to roast it, and I liked it a lot. I would say the thing about the unevenness is, I can't, I don't know if this is true for all of us, or I can't remember, but, like, I know the la- a couple of them, especially the ones that you highlighted for me, like, 30 seconds shorter, because you just sort of, like, really, like, I mean, like a lot of Lark songs do that, but just like the sort of like repeating the uh, like the chorus over and over again at the end. I think I only really noticed on Meat Cleaver though, because like I was still watching the video, he just sort of kept like staring at me, singing it while like eating like little pieces of meat. <laughs> like I know, I get it. <laughs> it was a good yeah. song, so it was fine. It was just sort of like weird. I was just like, I right, we're still here, like it's five and a half minutes. Like okay, <laughs> <laughs> I guess what honestly the way probably was is because of that warning. I was like, all right, like when's like the other shoe gonna drop? You know. Like, like, <laughs> but it's good. I like it a lot. It is. It's a good Halloween listen to. It's a good sort of. It's it's, it's also it's a, a nice just sort of like break from like the standard sort of themes and sound and things of any of any music. But I mean, I guess I'll just stick with the rap because it's he's rapping. But I mean, it's not. It's always it's nice to like see the you know other sides of things that aren't as mainstream that people can you know take advantage of and use. So I, I like him a lot. I think it's good. I'll, but. This dude really fucking likes eating people. Like I was, like, <laughs> just like everyone was like, you know, I'm, I'm DK. I don't know, murder, death, kill, and then it's like we're hungry. Like fuck, every time you got me. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is sort of interesting. I think there is a, I don't know. There's probably like two like larger takeaways that I guess you can have from the music, or at least that I take away. One is it's sort of interesting. Not just in uh, Brother Lynch, but if you listen to various sorts of horrorcore music, um, thinking about like the themes that come up, and so cannibalism is a theme that comes up often. Uh, Brother Lynch is definitely like the biggest. Uh, I don't know, if proponent is the right word, but uh, the biggest purveyor of the the cannibalistic lyrics. But and then, like I said, murder comes up a lot. But I think also, like, interestingly, like, the sort of, like, violence against women and, like, 
specifically like sexualized violence against women seem to be like the sort of like and also I guess mental illness too out there and there too seem to be like the core stones of like what is considered like scary I guess which is sort of like interesting to reflect on or like why are sort of those things scary and I know even from like my own experience I know like it's sort of interesting where people will draw the line like some I find that like most people are actually like okay with uh you know fictionalized murder but some of like the violence against women stuff they'll sort of like draw the line at but yeah it's, I was, it's sort of like does reveal like what our culture considers to be scary i guess yeah definitely i don't know you're something else yeah and then the other thing that i like about the music is it it's so over the top that <laughs> I don't know if it's intentionally does this or if this is just a byproduct, but I feel like it just makes the people who will complain that rap is too violent or whatever. It, it sort of like makes them look silly mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah. Um, cause I feel like I, you don't hear this as much anymore even, but there's definitely like a segment of people who can't really grasp that rap lyrics are not, necessarily true right like, they feel like any violence depicted in rap must really have happened in real life uh-huh but this just takes it so over the top that i feel like you have no choice but to sort of reflect and be like oh, okay i guess this is just all made up yeah yeah I, I, it's always weird to me where and when people decide that like obviously this must have happened because they're singing about it and when they don't i think a lot of like rap is like a big like victim of that i think for like pre i'm gonna say some obvious like racial reasons i think that people like are like easy to mm-hmm. you know, on that yeah but like yeah throughout uh lynch's whole career i think you you're f- just forced to realize the sort mm-hmm. of fallacy of that yeah uh, that's true and yeah like i said i i don't even know if it was as much on this one but i think you would personally enjoy all the the baby eating stuff uh i can promise you i will without a doubt yeah i think the season of the sickness one is like the most most references to eating babies (laughs) (laughs) the man found a lane and he's comfortable and he really wrote it out and i appreciate the fuck out of that (laughs) Uh, have you watched i'm just curious like interviews with him and stuff is he like sort of like always pretty intense or was it just like he's like kind of a goofball and like when he's like in the studio he like puts on a persona or is he always like trying to like be like brother lynch hung uh i mean he doesn't have like the crazy eyes yeah okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like he is w- weird i guess <laughs> I, I only watched like the one interview with him um yeah, I mean, he he has, like, a sense of humor to him, sort of, but, like, a sort of, like, a strange, like, dark sense of humor, I guess. It's the type of person where it's, like, I believe him that he hasn't eaten people, but also if then he came out and said, actually, I have, I would also believe him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to keep people. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like, uh, he... De- because he has, like, a couple of sort of music videos, and he definitely puts on, like, a persona in those. That's not his real persona, but, but yeah. I mean, uh, and I'll just say, too, Brother Lin Chung does have other non halloween songs, too. Uh, I don't tend to find those ones as interesting, but so not not everything is is like this, but a lot of it is. That's all for my artifact. Alex, what would you look at this week? So my artifact was... Um... Top five horror movies of all time by uh, Cinefix, which is a YouTube channel I've been a fan of for a while now, and they they do a bunch of stuff. But what I like about what I like about them probably the most is that they do like a lot of like top five, top ten, top whatever lists. But it's not just like here's the criteria we did for all of them, and then we're gonna rank like ten, like one through ten, and one's the best. Um, what they tend to do is sort of like a pick like big sort of chunks of a genre of film like for example like the horror movie and then sort of like talk about the best ones in that category and come up with like why they think this one's the best and they'll do that for like 10 or 5 or how many different categories so like each move that's ranked isn't necessarily like 4 isn't necessarily better than 5 it's just they're sort of different and they kind of can see that one might be their best of all time but you can they 
they're sort of very say like they're pretty open like abstract like these can go in any sort of position these are just our favorites in the category and so i like that conceit of list making but more specifically for the top five horror movies of all time um i like this video too because they say like well you know top five horror movies texas chainsaw alien sounds of the lambs shining and psycho list done boom you're welcome and they say like you can't really well i mean they they basically can see like these are sort of like the biggest punchers for like the slasher the isolation the sort of serial killer like freak out mind one and like all like you know all these different categories but but they go with the conceit of well what if we took that out you know what if we got rid of all the obvious big heavy hitters like what would we be left with what can we put back to fit fill these voids and that we're taking out by getting rid of like sort of the major canon because there's a lot of horror movies that are made like all the time and a lot of them are good but you know you sort of only hear about like the sort of standard classic like these are like the best of the best and so um to quickly go through you know they start with texas chainsaw and so they replace that with like a different slasher but again they get rid of like you know like jason Voorhees and uh michael myers and freddy Krueger and all them uh, because they'd all be you know like the standards are obvious like that's like the like big canon of them and so they go with the um like a like a sort of like the italian slasher films of the 60s um and the one they pick is um blood and black lace which is about um like a modeling agency that's haunted um like you know stalked by a murder sort of in the basement in the immediate area um they replace alien uh with the descent which um there's also I like I that's I think that's the only one out of their replacements that I've seen before watching the listening to this list, which is a 2005 spelunking horror movie where <laughs> <laughs> uh, a group of like cave divers I want to think they're divers climbers whatever are um, sort of lose their uh, ropes or whatever and get caught and they're stuck in um, an underground cave system that's occupied by um, like a different like sub race of like subterranean like humanoids that like have lived down there for you know generations and so they like are completely deaf to like the dark and like they just like sort of like hunt them down so it's a lot like alien except in, instead of in uh isolated spaceship it's an isolated you know cave system um silence of the lambs is replaced by henry portrait of a serial killer which is sort of like this weird it's not like found footage but it's just like this super like weird like low budget intimate look in this dude that just like goes around and just like fucking like murders people but it's not like sounds of lambs where it's like oh yeah it's like animal like just like this super like cool refined dude um that's like in jail and you're like oh he's kind of unhinged but he's like suave it's like fucking michael rooker who plays uh what the fuck's his name the blue guy from guardians of the galaxies the hillbilly oh willie harrelson no nope, michael rooker <laughs> oh i'm sorry Wait, whose name are you looking for i'm the character who michael rooker plays in gardens of the galaxy um the like redneck that like trains oh uh, uh is the whistle and all that shit. I don't know. whatever <laughs> fucking name it doesn't matter michael rooker is the more important one of those two things to know anyway it's like this and he's like it's like unhinged like fucking serial killer and you just sort of like watch and it's not like doesn't like it's not like it's not like a, it's like an un uncritical in the sense like it's just sort of like you just like watch it happen you're just like fuck <laughs> um the shining is replaced by the innocence which is like a 60s uh loose adaptation of henry james turn to the screw which is a really good novella uh sort of where i made my bread in the english department i think the first uh <laughs> first time i went in on a class discussion so that always holds a good place in my heart um and then finally psycho is replaced by peeping tom which is like this super weird um like mirror movie of psycho which peeping tom came out the same year and was like but he like let it go to critics like critics watch it and they panned it and like his whole career was sort of like fucked up from that going forward and then alfred hitchcock like i think knowing that that happened like did not let like critics preview it and they can only see it in wide release with theaters and it was like like it's like like it's the like horror movie it's like the alfred hitchcock movie out of fucking alfred hitchcock's like whole filmography and so you know you get and it's like about this weird dude with like weird sexual like voyeurism freudian undertones and a weird relationship with his mom who like, kills women and so it's this it's this really sort of weird real life interesting um movie parallel but 
that's sort of the broad strokes. I talk about a lot more films and I would sort of recommend checking out the channel if you like movies for good, fairly obscure recommendations. But um, I guess I'll ask you first, Justin, if you were familiar with any of these movies or you've seen any of them, both the replacements and the sort of canon originals that they talk about. Okay, so I uh, looked at all the movies that they even mentioned in passing. I've seen Alien, The Shining. I think I've seen Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street, mm-hmm. but it's also possible I've seen like some sequels for those or something, because there's a like lot. 50 of each of those. Yeah. I've seen The Thing, mm-hmm. The Orphanage, okay. and Under the Skin. Nice. The rest I have not seen. Um, yeah, I should, as you mentioned in passing, I should also say that uh, they'll talk about sort of two movies at length, but they'll sort of rapid fire off like, 10 movies for each subcategory <laughs> so just like and they'll usually they'll name them and all like the more like the last couple of years they started doing like the movies like name on the bottom of the screen that sometimes they didn't in the beginning of their lists like the like the first ones that they did but you'll get a lot of movies referenced throughout these videos if you ever like really like have no idea what you want to watch they'll give you like 50 recommendations in like 10 minutes <laughs> So you saw in those, and I mean, there's, I think there's, it's a sort of a mixed bag of the ones you saw <laughs> between like, I mean, I don't want to be like a guy that's like all horror movies are bad because they're not, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, what's your, I don't mean, I was, I'm just curious what your like favorite horror movie is. Uh, favorite of all time. Um, I think I will, I, I will say I saw The Orphanage in Spanish, which I think was the, original way it was made i'm not sure if they uh i'm not so i was orphanato i'm not sure if orphanage is any different or if it's just a like a dub or how that works but that one was very good but i think i'll go with a movie i saw recently called good night mommy oh fuck the it's, two german twins oh you saw I that saw one that in theaters. <laughs> i love that movie <laughs> Yeah, I wish the ending wasn't kind of like that torture porn yeah, ending. Yeah, it's a little, a lot, but yeah. But it's just, it is very creepy, and they, like, really max out the premise of the movie. Mm. It's like, at, you you kind of, like, read the premise, it's like, the mom comes home, and her face is covered in bandages, and the kids don't know if it's really their mom or not. And it's kind of like, okay, but then you, like, think about it, it's like, wait, but is it their mom? And they, like, really, like, play that out to the maximum and i think there and i'll say like that what uh orphanage and goodnight mommy both have in common is that they're both scary but also both have they're also kind of like both sad not to like give too much away so i like i like horror movies that like uh have um other something else going on as well not just kind of like yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, like, I, some of the Saw movies are okay, they're kind of, like, interesting, just, like, as, like, a contrast, but I wouldn't put them as my favorite, because, like, you just watch some, like, torture porn for a little bit, and, and or even, like, the slashers. I will say, like, I thought Freddy vs. Jason tried to do something interesting, I, I wouldn't put it among my favorites, but for the most part, like, the slashers, they just slash in the end, so those are, don't tend not to be my favorites, even though some of them are very scary, but, yeah, I'll, I'll say goodnight, mommy. What I really like about Goodnight Mommy is like you they it's they don't hide the twist. Like the twist isn't really like takes you by surprise. I maybe that's not true for you, but like a lot of, like I when I saw it, I talked to people I saw it with and I read reviews, like the sort of the twist of like what's really going on isn't meant to like come like flirt. You're supposed to sort of get there yourself, but just like sort of like being able to watch it happening in real time, like through the conceit, I just really enjoyed that like where the twist is obvious but you're just sort of like along to see how it resolves Mm -hmm. um but yeah i like i (laughs) it gets super it gets a lot in the last like five minutes but um (laughs) it's really good i like it a lot i don't think horror movies get enough credit for like what they can and do bring to the table as far as like for film and like some of the subtext can be pretty obvious but like even then like the commentary is a lot more potent and important than some of these like fucking like big budget dramas that are trying to be like the human experience like even like a movie that we have very different opinions about like the purge the social context (laughs) is like pretty ripe and like apparent and is a lot more important than like probably the last five movies to win oscars i don't know what won the best picture the last 10 times but like two years ago it was a way fucking a fish and like there's probably important racial tones to that but i didn't watch the film i didn't watch it it wasn't that okay 
I like, yeah. And so, I mean, we can just do a safer one time, just going in and out on the purge or like other mo- two movies that we, we just like movie fights, but I don't think, we, I'm not sure if we actually disagree that much on the purge. I think we just have, are valuing different things. Say, you, that's true. It's more <laughs> how much we weigh different aspects. That's fair. I remember I was listening to a podcast and talking about like how, because a lot of like, they started just making like all these like low budget weird shitty like exploitation films in a lot of different subcategories in like the 60s 70s and even 80s and like because it was like here's ten thousand dollars go make a movie kid like you gotta like a lot of the best sort of weird auteur experimental like things that you can't get from a studio that's investing a hundred million dollars in a movie that have has a lot of producers and like executives breathing down your neck to make sure you make something that like sells well you know and horror movies are still made like fucking dirt cheap like relatively now like five million dollars is like nothing to make a movie and so like a lot of them can just be like sort of loose, shitty, cheesy, like obvious tropes and things, which you can do those and still be good about it, obviously. But like, I don't know, like there's a lot more because the expectations are continuously so low that you can really get some good, surprising material out of horror films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll just say, uh, I was sort of surprised, like some of the, well, for, for one thing I'll say, I thought it was kind of weird, their, the premise a little bit that they sort of just said, like, assume that all the classic movies were also the best movies, which I'm not sure it's necessarily true. Like, for example, I don't know, Exorcist, I, I feel like was good back in the day, but like now like people just laugh at Exorcist. And even like Alien is still a good movie, but not really scary anymore. Like the Alien kind of, the Alien doesn't really look like that real in all the scenes. Like, um, but, and, but, and then also like, I would ne- I wouldn't consider Shining to be even a horror movie. I thought it, it has scary elements, but I don't, I would never I never would think like oh what horror movie did I watch Shining? Same with Under the Skin. I don't know if you've seen that one, but it's not, it's not really like a scary movie. It's not, Under the Skin isn't really like a scary movie, right? I just like this weird thing where like categorizing a horror movie. I don't know, yeah, there seems, like, a lot of things that can sort of, like, I don't know, like, either qualify or disqualify, where it's like, ah, it's kind of this weird thing between, like, a th- thriller and just, like, sort of an unsettling drama or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think, I will say, if we, if we're gonna count something like The Shining as horror, I don't know if you've seen Killing of a Sacred Deer, but that's real unsettling and yeah, it's not again. It's not like a horror movie in the sense of that I would think of one necessarily. But but if you're looking for something like that, I would say Killing of the Sacred Deer is really good. Yeah. Also, uh, I can just list through a couple that I was thinking that could have been added to. The sure, list. please do. I don't. This came out after the movie, so it's not fair. But Midsummer, I actually really enjoyed. I know people were kind of mixed on that one. I don't know if you saw Midsummer or not. I haven't yet. Okay, it's like very. It's yeah, it's a wild ride. I think it really depends because that one's another one where there's like a, a real story to it too. I think it depends if you kind of connect to the story as like themes of like mental health and relationship stuff. And but anyway, uh, and then Green Room I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Your next is kind of like this weird comedy horror thing. I'm not even sure if it's trying to be funny, but. I, I'll always recommend that one. Drag Me to Hell, underrated, I feel like. <laughs> I uh, think that recently that Drag Me to Hell has been underrated, which is weird. Yeah, because it never came out and I heard nothing about it. Yeah, it's like one of those horror movies that you'll, you'll, like, if you just watch television, like some movie channel, it'll definitely be on this month. It doesn't do anything particularly amazing. It's just like scary kind of and like it's one of those things you could just like watch it like i feel like anyone who at all enjoys horror could just watch it and like agree that it was like a pretty good movie uh but like never gets talked about i guess i might also throw the fly onto the list uh it's like an older movie but um always the fly yeah i was kind of surprised they didn't mention that one actually because i feel like that one does kind of fall into the classic they well they do it lot of horror movies and they're sort of pretty like i remember i was watching they did one it was like top five horror movies they did like top five or top 10 like villains and like top 10 movie monsters and they already put the alien as a villain so they're like well we can't put it as a movie monster so like if they talk about it in another video they're sort of like they try to try to like paint as a broad a swap as they can so like 
in other Cinefix videos, they've talked about the fly in horror categories. Um, but like the, I think was, it's one of the top, it's either like, they have like a scariest movie moments, like top five, like horror tropes or something. And like the fly is definitely one of like, in at least one of those videos. They like, there's like at least four or five, like full, like 10 to 15 minute videos of like scariest, this or the other thing from Cinefix. They all, like, they all talk about a bunch of different movies all over the place. So yeah, I think that they just happened to not, I think cause this is their most recent one. And so I think they like were like what we talked about all the other ones sort of like up and down. So they sort of went for the more obscure ones at this point. Mm-hmm. But you're right, um, Fly definitely is up there. Big fan. Have you seen? I'm gonna recommend um, Ready or Not. I know we I texted you about it, but it's not. It's a kind of a horror movie. It's definitely like a sort of funny thriller sort of thing. Like I don't know. I think it's kind of like You're Next from the way you're describing it and like what I remember about You're Next. Um, and so I think like that's a good one too. They probably would probably be pretty good companion pieces to watch. But big fan. It just came out. I think it's probably not in theaters anymore. Definitely won't be in theaters by the time this comes out. Um, <laughs> but Ready or Not was a good, really good film. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, yes, horror movies can definitely be scary, especially if you watch them in a room that's unsafe. All right, Justin, now that we're in our unsafe room, uh, what's going on with you, dude? So what I have on mind this week is the knocking sound that I keep hearing on my door every night at midnight. Mm-hmm. So the first night I was, I was sleeping because it, it keeps happening at midnight. It's like right on the stroke of midnight, too. Um, but like I woke up, so I like woke up and heard this knocking sound. Mm-hmm. And it lasted for five minutes, like pretty much like five minutes exactly. Right. Um, and I was like trying to like peek out my window. Like I didn't have my front light on. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like, why would I? And right. so I couldn't like see anything out there. I could just like hear the knocking at the door. I didn't want to like, you know, like turn on the lights or anything, you know, because I don't really know who this was. No, definitely. Um, so then, but then I like stopped. So I'm like, whatever. Uh, and then the next night, actually, like the same thing happened. Like I like woke up, heard the knocking. Right at midnight again. Yeah, like right at midnight, right at the stroke mm-hmm. of midnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I like woke up, tried to look out the window, couldn't see anything. You know, so by the third night, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just gonna like stay up until midnight. Uh, you know, see if I can like figure out what's going on. And again, like right as midnight hit, you know, I hear these footsteps come mm-hmm. up and then i hear this like knocking on the door mm-hmm. and it sounded like even louder than either the previous nights and mm-hmm. uh, you know so i'm just like staying there like listening to this knocking and you know like obviously I, i'm still not trying to answer the door really uh so i just like waited five minutes for it to stop um uh, yeah so like then it happened again a fourth night uh still like don't really know what to do and so then like yesterday you know i heard the knocking again and it's like the loudest it's ever been like just like pounding on the door Jeez. uh and i'm pretty sure like i haven't heard the person speak before i'm pretty sure it's a man because i heard him speak and he said something about like tomorrow so i wasn't really like sure mm. you know what to make of that i mean he kept like repeating it over and over so like i'm sure he, I'm sure that's what he was saying. Right. He kept saying, tomorrow, tomorrow. It's like pounding on the door. I was like, I don't know if that like means that he knows I'm home or like, mm-hmm. I don't know what to make of that exactly, but. Well, I just want to double check. I'm looking at my watch right now. What what time do you got, buddy? Uh, It's 11. Oh, no, it just uh, turned to midnight, actually. Hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I... Uh, oh, shit. Do you hear that? Oh. Uh, um, yeah. Maybe yeah, but it could that could be that could be anything. I wouldn't. Uh, do you think I should should I answer it? Or? Um, I, he's he's there for five minutes, right? You can 
it's, it's okay. He'll, he's, he can wait. He, seems, he keeps coming back. He seems patient. I think, uh... That's true. Well, I guess, like, while we wait, uh, what's on your mind this week? Well, this is, yeah, um, hmm. Well, a- as you might have been able to tell, I've been a little sick recently. Mm-hmm. So my sister got me a teddy bear to make me feel better. Okay, but, that's nice. Yeah, it was nice, but I can't... I keep misplacing it. I only, like... I'm pretty sure I leave it on my bed when I wake up. But I always sort of lose it when I, like, lie down, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you, like, are you, like, turning I, in your sleep or something? Or? I don't think so. I don't know, but, like, I'll even in the morning, like, I'll put it down, and then I'll, leave, I'll like, forget something to go back in the bedroom. It's not there. It's usually back once I get in bed, but I don't know when the lights go off. I can never find it. And then, but I don't know. I, I think it's just, maybe it's smaller than I remember. But, I don't know. Um, you know, like, when you lose socks, you do laundry, right? Uh-huh. That's a thing. Do you ever, like, misplace, like, any, like, uh, silverware when you do, like, dishes? Is that a thing? Uh, I mean, not that I know of. I, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, sometimes I'll, like, They'll be like, you know, I'll put them in like a, a, a glass or something. And I like forget that they're like sitting in a glass, maybe, but. Right. Yeah. yeah. Kind of sure. like that. Not not exactly like that. I don't know. My head's kind of stuffed. I can't really hear anything right now. Mm hmm. I, I, I can't really. I, maybe I'm just out of it, but I'm pretty sure I had like an extra knife somewhere. I don't know. It's whatever. I just figured I'd ask me that. That knocking's getting kind of loud. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, he really, like, starts pounding on the door. He's really going in. Uh... I... Did you know this? Did you ready to look at the guy, or...? Uh... You know, I, I don't know. Like I said, I've never, I've never seen him. Uh... Oh, did, did he just say... Did, did he say he's coming in now? Is did that you what hear he said? That? I thought, I see, I can't... I can't, I can't really hear him. Oh, shit! Justin? Justin? Nah, he's probably fine. Oh, there's my fucking- ah! Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. We will return your call. Uh, yeah, Justin, it's Alex. I'm doing a stupid pre-recording for the outro if you want to make sure to go at the door. The target's fine. I just want to a little baby. Anyway, uh, that's our show. Should be showing us for like you to have like yourself. Music produced by Nicholas Pizzuto. Rate us five stars on iTunes. Follow us on Facebook. Tell a ghost or demon about the show. Join us in two weeks uh, if we find two new texts to discuss. This is like the dumbest shit. Doesn't make any sense to do it this way. God, I hope you're fucking right about that dude. You fucking stab your fucking throat or some shit. Has Trump released his fucking taxes yet? Holy shit.